percent chance we're going to get hey, anything folks, other than the first one. There's a 06 percent chance tonight <laughs> that we're going to get to Skynetter and Liberty Tech today. <laughs> it's that's a chance, dude. It's a chance. Right. If you guys are sticking maybe, around for the, go ahead. May the odds be ever in your favor. Yes, may the odds be. And you know, it's very fitting that you quote from that movie today because that's right. Kind of what we're seeing is kind of. Kind of moving it, except uh, you know the the you know when they gather to select the people and everybody's nervous about being selected. Now this generation, no, when they gather, they're like clamoring to be one of the ones picked. Right, and if they want and to if, be the tribute. Yeah, they want to be the tribute. Now they really want to be the tribute, and if you think that it's wrong for them to want to be the tribute, then you hate children. Then basically you want children to die, even though that's what happens with the tribute. You know, they two. You know, how many how many people did they select? Eleven. What was it? How many districts? Twelve were districts. There? Man. Well, so twelve men enter. Twelve men and women enter. I don't know. Did they advance enough in their culture to have twelve men, women, and whatevers and all the others? Have you never watched? The Hunger Games? Is this what I'm... being sarcastic. Am I... Am I... I was being sarcastic. I know that they didn't. I know it was always male and female and man and woman in the show, but I was being... Dude, you could have played with it. We could have ran with it. We could have spent the whole show talking about that and giving everybody distraction from all the fear porn out there. Instead, we're going to give them one giant fear porn (laughs) pill tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, be prepared. Sit back. Get a glass uh, of water. (laughs) Right. If you could just (laughs) lubricate your throat just to let that big fat fear poor pill slide on down because we're gonna give it to you we got we got a really nice uh fear porn show to deliver to you tonight uh i hope this is the last one we do like this in a while because i really do like talking about other things but uh here we are again i'm gonna go ahead and play the bump i'm just gonna i'm gonna play the bump for the first segment of the show and imagine that that means that I'm going to play the other bumps eventually. <laughs> the Skynetter bump and the Literary Tech bump. Let's pretend. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Dude, are you with me? Remember when we're doing the show? Remember me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, Remember I'm, me? I'm waiting for the bump. All right, here comes the bump. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force learn from these stories? This is Newsfire, where we set your news on fire. So if you heard the little slogan there at the end, it says, This is Newsfire, where we set your news on fire. Again, we have another story. It's kind of a continuation of the last couple of weeks, actually, where the story kind of sets itself on fire. It's, it's a, that's a big old dumpster fire that we're reporting on here. I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity. Why don't you, why don't you open up, if you'd like, open up with what have you been thinking about? As, as you know, you've been moving towards the moment where you're going to be on the show and you were going to talk about uh, National Cattle Car Rally Day 2018, right? Cattle Car Guide well, Rally Day. Sorry. So I've I've been I've been watching this, um, sort of watching this unfold from afar because it's inescapable. I mean, you open up Facebook this morning. I I, I totally I wasn't like my calendar is not marked or anything. I'm not. I wasn't like, <laughs> you know, pre- prepared for. The, pining for this moment to, to occur uh but like i said it's inescapable i woke up this morning before work and i flipped open my phone flipped open how do you like flipped that open. i'm, I'm showing i'm showing my age so i'm cute. showing my age i flipped open my phone <laughs> um i flipped open my iphone and uh I, uh I i went to facebook you know just check see what's going on usually the first thing i first things i do in the morning uh i check the weather i i, I actually i yell out to the living room to google and I check the weather like that way. I, I, I uh, contact my NSA agent that's in my living room. Oh, good. Oh, good. Good. Right. And I say, hey, Google, what's the weather? And uh, we, the second thing I welcome, do is I check. Right. You have to. We right, welcome our to. robot uh, NSA overlords just for the record. Right. But 
Right. Go ahead with your old man. I'm story. on the first for the list of robot insurance because robots right. are strong and they're made of metal. Right. Uh, you've you've so, introduced the world to your old man. Mind, my routine. So go ahead and continue. Right. So I'm, I, I, I look through. I opened Facebook and I looked through Facebook and and this morning it was inescapable. Like the first 35 posts were all these little uh, Benito Mussolini's all marching out of school uh, to to give up their rights and take yours. I mean, I don't have any problem well, there were if you want to. Benitas thrown in there. There were some Benitas too. Right, I guess, yeah, we could say that. We can, I guess, yeah, sure. Yeah, there were some mid uh, It wasn't all Benitos. And it was Beni, whatever. Okay, well, Benitos. you know what I mean. Little Mussolini's, little Eichmann's. Yeah. You know? Uh, so I, I see all these kids and everything, and I'm like, oh, my God. So the entire news cycle is going to be inundated with these little kids out marching, carrying on. And look, here, here's the thing that I'll say first off, okay? I do believe in the concept of natural rights, okay? I understand that the Bill of Rights itself, the Constitution, is a parchment paper, uh, and it, it's a parchment barrier. It doesn't offer any well, did actual just, hold on. physical protection. Hold on. i got to call you out on this. I can't let this just slide by. This is a yeah, tough show. We need all the comedy we can get. You go just ahead, said it. parchment paper. Like, yeah. not parchment, but parchment paper. That's like, that's that's like, is that like double parchment or what? That's it's like a pen like, pen. Pen pen. Well, anyway, so you saw a bunch of <laughs> memes today. So okay, so I see. You know, uh, you made me forget what I was even saying. All right, that's good. No, you. No, uh, okay, I'm I, I, natural I, yeah. rights and I got, parts right. Okay, paper. so so these 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 little Mussolini's, the little Eichmanns, they're all out there. They want to give up their rights. They want to take away your rights. Uh, they. What I'll say is this: is that I I don't. I fundamentally disagree with them on everything that they are trying to accomplish um, as far as gun control is concerned. I think this is absolutely um, absolutely absurd. I believe that they're being uh, used as useful tools. Uh, I would I would say that more than I'll even go as far as to say that 90 percent of these kids, uh, number one, Probably couldn't name another amendment in the Bill of Rights other than the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. They have no, they're, I will almost guarantee these little Tide Pod eaters are completely clueless. Uh, they have no idea. One of the things I'll another thing I'll say is that I could almost guarantee, with that said, that they don't know and, and anything else other than the First and Second Amendment. Uh, that. Most of them were there because they were given a choice to stay in class or get a free cut from class. So you can participate in this march and you don't have to go to class. Your choice is go march and go out, you know, do this walkout or algebra. Well, it's more than that. It's do this march or whatever. They, they, they didn't all do the same thing, uh, but whatever it is that they did, the 17 minutes of please take our guns and take everybody else's guns march, uh, uh, it was uh, stand for the children, stand against children being killed in schools, or stay in school and do your algebra and not stand right. for the children. Right. Now, like I said, I fundamentally disagree with with their perspective um, on this for a multi for a multitude of reasons. Uh, you know, one of which being that the uh, uh, this perceived boogeyman isn't very much of a boogeyman at all when you take it into uh, in, into consideration. You, you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning or attacked by a shark at the beach than you do from getting killed by a by a gunman in school. Uh, using, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I'm uh, use I, a little I, I do. Go ahead. Sorry. What Go ahead. what I do is what I do support is I, I I I fundamentally I support their right to voice their opinion, even though their opinion is ill-informed and stupid. Uh, what I don't like about this is I feel like these uh, these young people are being used uh, by unscrupulous forces to push an agenda that they're not necessarily. Um, aware of or fully informed on they've been led they've been led to believe something that's not true right that 
there's this epidemic of of school shootings and violence and our children are fundamentally unsafe and we've got to do something about it and the something that they got to do about it is is stop people from right. from getting guns and you know one of, one of the things paul I, I don't know if you if you had uh, I, I shouldn't even say i don't know if you've seen it because i know you haven't uh i know you're not a big fan of uh glenn beck and probably most of the people here on the liberty i'm not, a, I am are not a great fan of glenn beck that is probably that not is correct beck fans are probably not uh, big beck fans over here on the Liberty Principle, On the Liberty but what Principle I, Facebook page, right? Right, right, right. So, uh, but with that said, uh, Beck had a video that he put out today that was uh, it was it was fantastic. He he went through and do you remember when he was on Fox? He had the chalkboard and he would do all these things like this guy's connected to this guy and that's how it gets back to that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so he did he he kind of did that what minus the chalkboard uh, today. And uh, he went and showed how all of these uh, radical communists that were involved in that woman's march um, are also tied to this student walkout and how it ties back to uh, several very unscrupulous characters, and uh, including Louis Farrakhan, uh, that were involved in organizing all of this. A very, very interesting video that he had. Now, there's, there's, there's not a lot of really good people that are behind the women's march organizers it's a i'm just gonna say it's a dark place one of their main partners that they list in their website you know what i'm gonna go to their freaking website are you gonna are you gonna say it's that lady that was a the chair for the communist party usa or something in like the six i don't know about that uh let me just go to their website here and you have enough national okay now Remember, the Women's March Youth Empowerment, this is, <laughs> I mean, th- th- this is this is organized by the Women's March organization, okay? So let me, let me go to the website area here. You can see. Now you guys can see we're on the website here. Power to the polls. So there you go. You know you're gonna, uh, you know, galvanize people to vote. This is, this is a high, highly partisan organization. They're calling for the impeachment of Donald Trump in many of their marches. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not gonna defend. Well, Donald I just Trump go go another, back. But can my, can can you go back one on on that screen to their little emblem there with the three heads, with the with the nice wonderful three heads I just saw. Where's this? Right there, power to the tools. It's on. It was. It we're on a little bit of a delay, so when it comes back up on the screen, just take notice of it. What uh, the three heads? What does it look like? Yeah. What is oh, it? The power uh, to the polls like? thing. I'm gonna click on the yeah, three heads yeah. here. What is it? What is? What, is, what are those? The heads? Let's see. I'm gonna click on power to the polls here. Uh, th- yeah, there it is. Power to the polls. There you see the three heads. And uh, there you go. Women's March presents power to the polls. Register to vote. We are the leaders we've been waiting for. Uh, yeah, now I'm I'm actually I'm gonna try and find this. Where the heck? Hey, is that W a copyright infringement? There, they got like the Volkswagen W there in that power. Oh, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh no! Oh no! Uh, that kind of right? rise, the oral history, and there's enough national school walkout. So there's the walkout head count. So. So what they've basically done here is they've gone to public schools. These are government schools. These are schools that are funded with taxpayer dollars. And unless you decide to live in the woods or do other things which are risky, almost all of us, whether we want to be a taxpayer or not, is. And it doesn't matter whether you're sending a kid to a school, you're a taxpayer. So they're using this the school they've gone to all of these public schools and they've approached all these different public schools and and something like 3000 schools agreed to let them into their schools let the women's march organizers into their schools to help kids spontaneously organize a march that the women's march was organizing 
Uh, so you have you have a situation where you have <laughs> be, be, be because of the government school and the kids all being in that one concentrated place. It's like shooting fish out of a barrel. Just they're just there, easy pickings. And uh, not only that, you're going to skate stage a political rally, and you're going to be staging something in which you are utilizing a public facility to give your political movement credibility, legitimacy, and a bigger voice. You are absolutely using the public school platform to enhance, to, uh, well, it's, it's, it's like a bullhorn that it's uh, making your voice all, all the more louder. And, and don't kid yourself, folks. Yeah, the, the Women's March... Let me find something here. I'll show the you. organizers. Wait a minute. Wait. The organizers uh, of that march attended uh, 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 an event that was um, I shouldn't say sponsored by. It was it was a Louis Farrakhan event. Um, did that not bother anyone at all? That you know, Louis Farrakhan. Come on, Jews are my enemy. Here's, Louis Farrakhan. Here's Nobody cares pictures. about this. It, well, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's. Of of course, it's yeah. You're basically you're you're walk associating. With me, you're you're associating you public schools. You're associating with an organization that associates with an anti semite. That's that's Farrakhan. That that's what our public schools des, uh, decided to do. And here's a here's a picture there. If you could see that there from uh, this is from a a march uh, in in uh, it's in, blurry. In Pennsylvania. Oh, there you go. You it's see focused. it there now? There it goes. Yeah, it's focused. So, so basically, that is a kid. She's walking. And and I was told, and many people were told, oh, no, this is this is just a protest. Uh, you know, it's not a protest. It's, you know, they're they're commemorating, you know, the, the 17 children killed in Parkland. There are numerous protests where you see these. They're carrying signs that are demanding the government enact gun control. This is a political rally folks that's exactly what it is and yeah i'm a little bit ticked about that i'm you know significantly ticked about that and i don't know that i have any i don't know i don't i don't know that i have any legal recourse even though you know if you're going to follow the letter of the law i i believe that uh, using uh public school as a political platform should be viewed uh, skeptically at the very least. I I actually interacted with a lot of these high school kids today on Twitter, and I have to say, some of them. How were many Tide Pods reasonable. did you eat beforehand? No, did, did some you of have them to were quite eat? reasonable? I had some decent conversations, but there was a significant portion. I won't even say a majority. I'll say maybe twenty percent or so. They had this air about them, and and. And uh, I mean, I've seen it. I've I've seen it from the one jerk water, whatever that little, one of the little uh, Parkland trolls. Uh, uh, that not 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 was not, it that little not Mr. Skinny Arms? Okay, no, no not, not Mr. Gestapo. Skinny Arms. The uh, this other kid. There's a clip with him, and he's on uh, uh, Bill Maher show, and and he says at some point he says, "Listen, all you generations that came before us, you screwed everything up." And we're going to fix it. We accept your apology and you can thank us for fixing your mess. So there's this, there's this error about a significant number of these kids. And they, they didn't just get this out of the blue. They're, they're getting fed this and they're getting fed this by the, by the communist, Marxist, socialist, whatever asshats that are behind the women's march. They're, they're getting this stuff fed to them that they're the superior race. The youth is the superior race. This is age supremacism that you're seeing. These are a bunch of age supremacists that are going <laughs> out there and they're basically saying, forget history, forget the past. None of that matters. Y'all didn't do nothing. We are the future. We're going to tell you now. It's our turn. They imagine that it's now their turn at the age of 18, little scrub noses, they imagine that it's their turn to step out into the world and take it over and demand of us that we live life 
the way they say we should because they're smarter than us. They're age supremacists is what they are. And again, I, I'm, I'm not talking, I'm, I'm not even talking about the majority. I'm just talking about a significant minority. And I strongly suspect, although I don't know this, I strongly suspect that that significant minority are most likely the most active, the ones most involved. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet that these kids are getting training by these Women's March organizers, that the schools let in, the school superintendents decided to let these, these denizens of tyranny into our schools to spread their toxic, I don't know what you want to call it. Toxic. I don't. I, mean, I was going to say cancer, but no, it's not cancer. It's uh. I don't. I don't. I mean, is the, is there bile that has bile that's like crap? Does bile poop? If bile poops, <laughs> then, that's then that's what, what it they is. Are. They are the poop of bile, dark poop of bile, and and they let them in, and they're training them, and they're training them. With a message, which is, where the you know it's an age supremacist message. You know, you you old people, you need to just die. Your time is up. You know, so, I'm I'm fifty it, fucking years old. My fucking time isn't up, asshats. So fuck you. <laughs> what? So I blew that show. So, so there goes my YouTube <laughs> monetization for this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ike, Thanks. little Ikeman. Thanks, Russia. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, Benito. Yeah, Thanks so, a lot for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, so much for that, man. Well, and and and, and it, it absurd the absurdity now is starting to swell to such an absolutely incredible, incredible level. I I was uh, this afternoon um, perusing the Coalition of New Jersey Firearm Owners Facebook page, and I happened across. This report that they are uh, they're gathering more information on on this uh, right now. I actually tagged you in this, Paul. Uh, this is uh, uh, two students from Lacey Township High School. Apparently, allegedly, allegedly, were given five days in school suspension because they posted pictures of themselves on Facebook with or near with or near guns. Uh, these are these are kids that were at a shooting range oh, with their parents. Yes, with they were at a shooting range with their parents, and so they posted these pictures on social media that contained firearms with a caption that said "Fun day at the range," uh, and uh, they were suspended. Here's the connection we're talking about: the uh, Women's March Co. President, this is the group that your public schools allowed to go into your schools and speak to your kids. Uh, so uh, members of the Congressional Black Caucus and Women's March co-president Tamika de Malloy, Malloy have come under fire this month for fa failing to condemn Louis Farrakhan after revelations that they met with or appeared at events, not an event, at events, at numerous events with the notorious anti-semite this is who you let into your schools you let an anti-semitic organization into your school because i mean i mean it, that's the game that you play right your guilt by association i don't necessarily like the guilt by association game but you know you should you should play you know, <laughs> right you should but play by your right but rules. in the meantime while you're pointing at Repu while you're pointing at republicans calling that guy's a nazi he's a nazi he you're associating with this. This is this is too absurd. This is right. too absurd, man. Too absurd. Oh, here we go. Partners and sponsors. Who are their partners? And whoa, look at that. Look who their freaking partners and sponsors are. Look who one of their big partners is right there. You see that right there? That's Planned Parenthood, folks. That is one of their major, major, major sponsors. Look at, look at, look at their. Uh, Let's see, who are their partners? You got SEIU. Uh, that's uh, basically, well, it's a, it's a, it's a employees union. I'm not necessarily against employees unions per se. Um, 
I won't say anything more about SEO right now until I can learn a li little bit more. You got gender action, gender at work, gathering for peace, AFL-CIO. Uh, I mean, this this reads to me like a who's who of all of the, not all, but and I'm not sure all these groups fit into that category, but many of these, they, they're, they these are far left groups. This is a highly partisan organization this is not a non-partisan non-political <laughs> these are organization. far leftists man these are far far, far left, right. leftists and when this i say far left not, i mean within the state of on state based parameters of how they use right well terms. and we're not even we're not even talking about we're not even talking about you know joe down the road who's a registered democrat we're not talking about those kind of leftists we're talking about Far leftists. We're talking about like closet communist leftists. We're talking about absolute freaking lunatic leftists. That's who these people are. Oh, unreal. <laughs> Larry, Larry comments here. He says the march organizers thank Paul for funding the schools to give them the platform to take his guns. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't necessarily think that this is going to result in people showing up to take my guns. It's, it's just that that's that's the attempt. <laughs> That's that's what these folks want. Now, the kids the kids don't understand probably. I'm not saying all of them. I I would judge them individually. If I meet a kid, I'm going to assess that kid individually, but I think it's safe to say that most of the kids don't understand that dreams of gun confiscation are just that. They're they're not going to be able to do that on a large scale. They can do what's being done right now in California and Washington state where they are selectively confiscating guns from people, and nobody in those states are really coming to the aid of the people who are having their guns. But that's another, another story altogether. So I, I wanted to, to shift gears for a moment. I wanted to have, because right now what, what we've delivered you so far is kind of the red meat, kind of like most of the people watching this, you guys understand this. and But everything that we're doing right here, right now, which I don't have a problem with in the context that we started doing it. Are we winning hearts and minds at all with this message? The message that we have so far, are we winning hearts and minds that can be won, such as can, can be won? I'm not saying, I don't know how many could actually be won, but, but is this the message that will win hearts and minds? Do you mean the, their, their march? No, what we, what you and I are doing, we're, we're, we're like letting them have it. We're calling them out. I, I don't, and I, and I agree with everything I said. I've not said anything I don't believe in, but you know, if we if we walk up to these folks and we tell them, for instance, you know, you're part of the you know the women's march. So this is now. Don't get me wrong. If I go before a super ten, superintendent, no, I want to let that superintendent know what a piece of garbage that person truly is, because that person is literally using money that was that was gotten to me i'll just say against my will uh not completely against my will i made a choice the choice was i was not going to risk the the threat of force involved in in turning them down uh so so they got my money through threat of force and they took that money at least in part and he decided to open up his school to this organization that is is fundamentally oppositional to everything I stand for. Well, wait, wait, hang on. We there's there's a whole bunch here that we didn't cover yet. We didn't talk about a whole bunch of stuff here. Like like when we we only touched on some of the people that were on this that were their organizers. Linda oh, okay. Sarsour for me. Linda Go Sarsour, ahead. board member. Oh gosh, Linda right. Sarsour, whatever. Right. The, the woman who claims to be a Muslim. Well, I guess she's Muslim, but. Uh, not necessarily re representing Islam in the best light, I'll just say. Her. Yeah, there's like, you got it. You, you just, you have to look and just go and where see are we who at? these. Where are we at? Tell me where we're at. You're right back on that page, that uh, that uh, about and uh, national team. Our mission, national team. Where's Oh, there's the national team. Oh, there's more here than just these two. Okay, so we got... Carmen Perez, uh, let's see, I don't know anything about her. Uh, Executive Director of the Gathering for Justice. I don't know anything about her. Oh, there's Linda Sarsour. Oh, great. She's a board member, so there you go. That's who we're allowing into our schools. 
I don't know these other folks. Uh, Br Brianna Butler, international team. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mirinali, uh, Chakravuti, had a field up. I don't know these. I don't, if I see some, you you know any of these folks? I don't know any of them. I know Linda Sasor. That's it. So far, I don't know any of these other folks. I don't know much. I don't know what to say about these folks because I don't know much about them. But uh, so, uh, according to the all, uh, you know, like your march to justice. I mean, right. So according to according according to uh, Daily Mail, uh, women uh, who marched in that march had unwittingly handed their personal data to the Communist Party. Oh, really? Yes. Where, where you... <laughs> That's oh. uh, the Daily Mail. Okay. Okay, I don't. The Daily Mail is like, eh. yeah, they're on the eh. fence. Eh. Right. Eh. I don't know that I would like stand up convicted and say it was in the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in the Inquirer. I saw it. In the... Yeah, it's, it's. I don't know if it's quite as bad as the Inquirer or not, but it's like kind of yeah, yeah, swimming, swimming in that level. Uh, and Larry said, slap me for saying so, but Jeff is making sense tonight. Wow. Oh, well, man. Well, well, that was from Larry. I'm doing Whoa. something wrong. <laughs> if, if Larry yeah. is telling me I'm making sense, I'm doing something wrong. Something's wrong. Oh, that's because you're... It must you're... be all the paint fumes. <laughs> well, yeah, I... <laughs> I guess it. Yes, now you know how Larry thinks the way he thinks. <laughs> right, he, right. He, he huffs paint. Stand over a bucket of polyurethane. Yes. Just breathe it deep. Larry is a he's a brilliant businessman, and he's a he's a wonderful tactician. And just before he's about ready to get on Facebook and do what he does, he's like, "Oh, I got to huff paint." <laughs> <laughs> get that in me. Get that in me. <laughs> Larry, I gotta you know it's true. You know it's true. But, uh, but but yeah, the, the the question I'm asking is okay, I'm reacting I'm kind of reacting viscerally and to a certain I had an interesting experience today. And I began my experience lobbing my uh you know the the cattle car guide epithets. I didn't I didn't do that to the to the to the high school kids. I didn't really feel like doing that to high school kids. Although, I mean, I took them seriously. I wanted to hear what they had to say, but I just felt like, yeah, I'm going to give them a little bit more patience than I would adults. And and if if a school in superintendent or principal had tried to talk to me, I would have been a little bit different with them because shame on them. Uh, they, 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 they have a lot more experience and understanding to know that what they did was, was a fundamental violation of the trust of a significant number of parents in whatever school district decided to go through with this. But the high school kids, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do a thing wrong. I mean, I think they're wrong. I, I, I don't think that they have the full facts, but they didn't do anything wrong, man. All they're doing out there is 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 protesting, and they've been told. The adults told them this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. The adults told them they're special. They know more than everybody else. It's the adults who's fed this crap into their heads. The adults told them that that they should fear for their lives because the NRA wants to kill them. And I believe many of these kids believe that. Not literally, but you know, it's it's kind of like that. And so, so these kids, some of these kids are really fearful and really interesting. Right, like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily blame, I don't blame them. And, and, and at the very least, uh, I, I, whether I agree or disagree with them, I'll support their, you know, their, their right to voice their opinion, their right to gather, their right to assemble, their right to protest. I'll, I, I, I'll support that, you know, but their, uh, their message is fundamentally flawed. Uh, they've been lied to, and worst of all, they are being used for a political agenda. They're being used by media and paraded around for an agenda, and that's just, that's disgusting. It's yeah. Well, they're being used as human shields, is the way that I would view it. But what I what I, I found myself in my comfort now. I, I got a range of responses from high school kids today. And, and basically, high school kids were going after me because I was challenging the school superintendent. And basically, I, I, I said that, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't have worded it like this. Not, not because it's not true. 
It is true. But it's just, I shouldn't have worded it like this only because it's just not effective communication. And, and what I said was as a little tag, this is exactly how Hitler came into power. You are a simple, you because of people like you. So, of course, what I got was you're, you're comparing him to Hitler. I never compared him to Hitler. I compared him to the people that allowed Hitler to rise. And my point is that when you surrender, you know, the old cliche, when you surrender your security for or your liberty for security, you end up with, with neither. And, and that's what the German people did. They were, they were insecure. Well, some of them they actually had more reasons to actually have legitimate fear than, than we do right now. We're not facing anywhere near the, the hard times that the Germans were facing when Hitler was rising to power. Uh, but still, they, they had genuine fears. And because of those fears, they surrendered their liberty to Hitler for security. And in the end, they ended up with nothing. And I, I stand by that point, but was it an effective communication? Well, no, because right away I got, instead of having an opportunity to talk to high school kids in a constructive way, the immediate responses were largely, I mean, I got some vicious responses from kids. And it was like, uh, you know, how dare you compare him to Hitler? And I kept, you know, I kept answering, nope, didn't compare him to Hitler. And uh, you, you're, you're probably, I, I got accused of uh, being a child pornographer a uh, rapist. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, pretty horrible things. I got threats. Uh, a couple of kids said they were going to beat me up. And I'm, you know, I'm just trying to calmly respond to them and say, you do realize that you're actually reflecting the type of police state uh, attitude that I'm warning about here. <laughs> but, <Right>. uh, <laughs> but I had like, I had like good conversations with some of them, even a couple of, I don't know if I've, sway any of them but maybe i got a couple of those things i don't know but the conversations that i had with them was yeah i was i would you know i want i was trying to find out well why do you feel the way that you feel and uh trying to you know i mean the, the common theme was from from the ones that would talk to me now the other there were there plenty that that it was just still all emotions no matter what they wouldn't they wouldn't actually try and talk to me but but I did get from from them that uh, they 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 definitely are. I would say they have a genuine fear. They are they're scared. They're worried. And when I tell them that they they don't really have a reason to be afraid, that they're safer now than ever I was when I was their age, that there is no there is no violence epidemic, guns or otherwise, that school shootings are an incredibly rare event. I I don't think that they really wanted to, to, to talk too much about that they didn't want to face it and larry says be very very careful interacting with underage kids online yes that's another thing when you're interacting with kids that are on online you you it's a it's a it's in a way it was kind of like it was a good thing it, it put me in a position where i knew you know you, you don't want to just you know say mean things to kids on, online so you have to be very you have to be very if you're gonna patient, say mean things to, to kids say it in person that's the well, lesson i've learned i don't from know about tonight's that. show that's not always and well Paul. if you want to say mean things, things to kids say in person that say uh, it in person but still you want to make sure that you don't do you're not saying anything that might sound like you're threatening a kid or but it was it was it put me in this position to have to and it, it was like it made me think it made me think about how I communicate because the good conversations that I had were with uh, a couple of them that actually would listen and, and had a good conversation back and forth. And a couple of them, I didn't, n none of them ended with, well, I see your point. You're right. But a few of them ended with, okay, well, we'll do, agree to disagree. I, I, I respect your opinion. I think you're wrong. Uh, I, I would say most of the conversations I had with kids that's how they ended. Uh, no, not that I, I mean, when I had, I don't know if how many spoke to, maybe 20 kids, something like that. It wasn't like a whole ton of kids. Uh, and there were just a few. There were actually just a few that fit into that, the one category I told you, which is, you know, where the, you know, the, the, the race supremacist, I mean, not the, the, the age supremacist. There was a couple of them, uh, you know, about 20% of them, you know. 
And there was a couple of them were just now I like the, the kids that were threatening. I would just block them. I wasn't going to try to have a conversation with a kid because that wouldn't end well, probably for me. <laughs> Even though they threatened me, it still wouldn't end well with me. So I was just no, nah, nah, not going down that road. But but the conversation was really, really interesting, and it really made me think about uh, my tactics. I I think that there is a a when we're talking in the aggregate we're sending out a like just a blasting a message so to speak uh a, a little bit of the uh in your face bellicosity is is not bad a little bit of the counter to the social shaming is 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 not bad uh to folks that are trying to social shame you into a position that you don't want to be in but i think i think the 101 conversations for me I think that I'm going to be looking to maybe I'm not going to try to understand them like, yeah, okay, well, I'm open to the idea that it's okay for the government to steal take guns. That's, that's not, that's not, a, I'm not open to that, but I'm open to understanding why they think that. And in understanding why they think that, then maybe I'll have some doors open to me where I can actually have conversations with them that might, and I don't just mean kids. I mean, across the board and then for the folks that they're immediately they're still like you try to have a conversation with them and they're still flaming out and shooting darts and i just i'm not gonna have i'm not gonna try to have conversations with those folks so i i'm 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 thinking and i'm interested to see what some of you guys think that are watching this i'm thinking that my 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 strategy is going to be more going forward yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have some I'm still going to have some punching kind of narratives that I'm going to put out there, but I'm really going to try and stay away from the polemics when I'm dealing with individuals. It, it, it doesn't even, it, it doesn't even none of this, all of this is a dog and pony show. It doesn't even make any difference whatsoever. A anyway, in any way, shape or form, what these people want is going to be next to impossible to accomplish what they want is not something that's going to be even remotely feasible. Well, that's the thing. Well, it's, it's, I, I won't, I won't say that it's not remotely feasible, but it's not, it's not. I mean, listen, Gun man, confiscation is not to, remotely feasible. What is no. feasible though, is that they'll pass legislation that bans certain guns, but they're not going to retroactively ban guns, not at no. a national level, at least it's not going to happen. And but but they're going to be looking for that, you know, incremental over the years, you know, the less and less uh, people will buy you know, buy guns. Well, I'm going to say what's going to happen is less and less people are going to buy guns legally. But one thing that Australia didn't have, for instance, well, first off, Australia didn't have two things. Australia didn't have a a long, deep uh, gun culture history. And two, it, it didn't have 3D printing. <laughs> so it was a lot easier right. to kind of phase guns out in Australia and even in England than than it is than it would be here in America. That's it. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> and forty five minutes later. For me. I'm not sure that I'm right. I believe that I am. Not 100% sure. But I... And I've had a couple friends talk to me, and they make some good points. They're talking about, you know, what happened after Sandy Hook. And, you know, there were the, there were these efforts. But this is... This, to me, is a game changer. I'm not 100% sure it is, but I feel like it is. I feel like... Here, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, right? The, there is a concerted focus that's happening on this um, or in, in, in recent, much more in recent years than in years previous. And there's, there, there is a reason for that. Then the reason for that is because uh, the, the size and stature of the federal government and the scope of the federal government and the, uh, the, the technologies that they have uh, at their fingertips. Now, uh, give way to something 
that a large swath of uh, authoritarian collectivists, shall we say, have been in pursuit of for eons. Uh, now what they have, it is totally and unequivocally possible. If there, if there, if there was, if there was, you know, uh, uh, let's let's just say that the little Eichmanns are successful, and they get everything they want. They get everything they want. Uh, you know, gun confiscation, guns are completely illegal, b- totally banned. They go door to door, kicking down. Door. I saw these idiots on Twitter. You get these little idiot Tide Pod eaters saying dumb shit like every NRA member should be dragged out in the street and shot so we could get their guns. And if they there was a couple let's of just them. say Most of them let's like just that, though. let's just say that they get their way. OK, what follows after that are those individuals, those people that are that belong to that group that have for millennia been uh, 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 salivating over this thought of world conquest. Uh, you have in place now a mechanism that is so uh, pervasive with the U.S. government, you know, uh, with the, uh, you know, the uh, military technologies, the spying technologies, the capabilities of the NSA, the CIA. You look at the stuff that China's doing and you think to yourself, the U.S. government has been doing this stuff for decades before the Chinese even thought to, to, to do any of this stuff. And if the shackles were completely taken off altogether, uh, it would be pure pandemonium. That right now, if those people were able to get into positions of power, which they already are in positions of power, it's just that they have restraints placed upon them that they can't quite shake loose, one of them being... Uh, the myriad of firearms that are loose in this in this country, uh, they would be able to do a lot of damage to the world if they were able to get a hold of that machine. Yeah, which is why I say that that you're seeing this concerted, this focused effort to uh, uh, to remove that obstacle. Yeah, and I, and I'll say you know, you know one of the one of the big narratives going out there, which yeah, makes logical sense, but I'm going to give a counter to it. The narrative is that Donald Trump is literally worse than Hitler, uh, but surrender your guns. And I'm going to tell you why that's not inconsistent. Because they firmly believe that in a very short period of time, they're going to have the power back. And they'll be the ones that benefit from the guns being taken. And they might not be wrong. Right they what might, they, they might, I, I fill in my vape with juice, with juice. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful, Pasta wonderful, juice, baby. wonderful, aromatic blend of blueberries and apricot. It's delightful. <laughs> oh, I love this story. Uh, Sean, uh, one of my Facebook friends, Sean sent this to me. Uh, it's from WARL.com. So this is a school in... In North Carolina, <laughs> uh, at 10 a.m. Wednesday, Justin Blackman got up from his desk and calmly walked out of Mr. Menendez's Spanish class. When he got outside, he discovered he was the only one of the approximately 700 students at Wilson Preparatory Academy in Wilson, North Carolina. 16-year-old Justin was in a company of one. During the national school walkout for 17 minutes, I, I, he said he stood by himself. He said he was disappointed. No one joined him. And now, right. the rest of the story. <laughs> that that's the <laughs> rest of the story. <laughs> so it it was uh it, you know it's interesting. I've 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 heard an anecdotal story where uh I don't want to relate sources here, but I've heard uh, a couple of kids that were talking about. Uh, some teachers kind of kind of let it be known they supported it. Some teachers kind of let it know they didn't support it. So some of the like if you if you happen to be in the class during that period of time when it happened and you were in a class where a teacher supported it, it was much more likely that much more kids would leave from that class. But if you were in a class where a teacher didn't support it, it was less likely that a student would have 
have have joined. So, right. And I, I wonder how telling. many students. I wonder how many students would have joined if getting up and walking out of the classroom meant that you would get five days suspension or two days of detention. I would, and not agree. a free pass to cut class. I, I I didn't appreciate the schools just signing up and being such a uh, just an easy a political part tool. Of it. They were political. They I were don't, political. I don't think I wouldn't tool. have supported them supporting and our our de- you know giving people detentions and suspensions for that. I, so, I so okay, one, so one school so, district locked the doors and wouldn't let the kids leave when they wanted to leave. I think that's, yeah, that's a little bit ridiculous. draconian. That's, that's a little that's ridiculous. Not, I, but at I'd the same time, are you are you telling school. me are you telling me, Paul, that I it, it would be okay then uh, for me on I don't know, uh, you know, National Fried Bacon Day, since we're bacon bakers, uh, National Fried Bacon Day. I got up from my desk at ten o'clock and walked out to protest fried bacon. That'd be fine. That'd be okay. I, I should sure. Like, okay, if you're going to do it all the time and you start disrupting everything, okay, that's going to be a problem. So it's going to be, how often does this happen? If it starts happening all the time, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Of course, now the schools, all these public schools, you you set a fucking precedent here. So you allowed this to happen, so you can darn well bet there's going to be a bunch of conservative groups that are going to say, okay, you let the women's march do it. Got to fucking let us do it. So Dude, maybe every I other just, week we'll have the afternoon. kids going out and protesting another thing, depending on which group. You know, today they're for abortion. Tomorrow they're against abortion. You know, <laughs> let our let our schools become the places where kids go to protest stuff. Just just let that be what that is. At- that's 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 kind of the road you're heading down here, folks. This is not an education. <laughs> This is not an education. And, and, you know, the kids, some of the kids were talking about how, well, you know, well this is, you know, we're, we're educate you know, we're learning the, the, the democratic process. You know, I try to tell them this is not a democracy. I didn't want to hear that. But at one uh, o'clock but, this afternoon, at one o'clock this afternoon, I posted on my Facebook, I want to organize a student walkout for gun rights for Friday, March 30th. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I, and I'm serious about that. I really, I really, that that is something that I would really, uh, that I would really like to do. I would like to organize a student walkout for gun rights for March 30th. Uh, I think possibly, uh, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm, see, I'm not a community organizer. I'm not Neither a Lewis Farrakhan. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys. So I don't even know where to begin uh, to do this other than posting this crap on, on Facebook. I mean, what do you do? Yeah, you post this I, crap I on want, Facebook, I, and you've got an audience of a few hundred, of which maybe three. Might two. Be Let's see. I got three message. shares. <laughs> I got I got three shares, and two of them were me sharing them to other pages that I'm an admin <laughs> on. So uh, we're off to a good start here. Off to a good start. I mean, where, do you, where, where do you go with this? How, how do you, how do you get this to go from this idea that's in my my boiler to to uh, real life. I mean, I want to. I I want to see this. I I want to give a, a contrast to what they're showing on the media. I want to see this. I want to see students all over the nation who actually support gun rights getting up and walking out of their class and saying, yeah, "Fuck because you!" They exist. Little Eichmann, fucking Benito Mussolini, motherfuckers. And so like, they already blew out the YouTube <laughs> monetization. Oh, yeah, well yeah, yeah, we're done. Oh, we're done with YouTube monetization. <laughs> so. So one one of the things that I got from talking to, again, not all of them, not even most of them, but just a higher number that I was kind of disappointing to see. But you definitely, what you got from them was this, this idea that they believed that all of the youth were behind them. This is a youth movement and all of the youth, their generation, they, they just had this idea that they're, that there's this monolithic youth generation that all believes that, hey, wouldn't it be smart if uh, we uh, lobbied for the government to take away our rights? Yeah, revolution now. Let's fight the man by empowering the man. Let's do it. We're rebels. We're the resistance, man. The <laughs> right, police right. state. 
Right. <laughs> we're, we're the we're res- revolutionaries, you know. And, they, and then that. this I idea that. that, you know, they got new ideas. And I'm trying to tell them none of your ideas are new. None of this. People, you know, since civilization has, has existed, uh, people in control of power have been have been managing the degree to which they want to allow people to have access to effective tools of self-defense. It's it's not a new thing, and the tactics are not new. Uh, the fear tactic that you know, if if we just let anybody have have access to that type of sword, man, it'll be bad for people. We 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 got to limit the type of people that can have that type of sword. Uh, you know, never mind the black codes. Never mind that history that we just recently did on Is Daily Monday, the the secret racist history of gun control and the and the uh, awful consequences. Uh, <laughs> so none of our ideas are new. They're 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 not interesting. Uh, they're not introducing any new concepts. The only thing that's new is the tactic of of these organizations going into public schools where you have a ready-made audience of millions. And if you get a significant number of school districts that agree to let you into their schools, man, what a cheap, easy way. I mean, cheap and easy, man. How much money do you think the Women's March saved by going into the schools and, and having the schools essentially assist them in this organizing? They provided... They, they didn't have to apply for any type of licensing for protests. They did this free. There was, there's, there's, there's no Women's March organizers that paid any money to these schools to pay a license to, you know, do the protests that you'd normally have to, to, to apply for and pay for if you were doing this in a public square. They saved millions of dollars. This was, a, this was one huge mega political ad provided for free by the public school districts of America. Using your freaking tax dollars. Good, good job. I don't. I. I think I'm done. And we're just about out of time. Do you have anything else? Do you. Do you have a wonderful wacky way to, to close this story out? Do we have? Do you, would you would you like to do the Liberty Tech story briefly, just to end on a little bit of a. <laughs> I don't, of, uh, I don't i don't i don't i don't it doesn't uh, no nah, we could we could we could leave it on this on this note okay. i think I, I, i'll I, my closing remark is this i think this is absolutely ridiculous um the in the way that it's being presented uh that this is grassroots when it was anything but grassroots i mean this is this is astroturfing 101 uh these big organizations with big names all came together uh, to push a political agenda. They weaseled their way into school districts across the entire nation uh, at the uh, uh, at the complacency, or not even complacency, at the exuberance of uh, leftist administrators and administrations who were starstruck and awed by the big names that were involved because they idolize uh, these goose-stepping leftists. And... Uh, and then the media is presenting it in such a light that it, as if this is a, you know, a spontaneous grassroots movement and it's anything but spontaneous and grassroots. I mean, this is nonsense that's organized by huge names in the left uh, in the far left, not even in the left, the far, far left. And uh, you're you as as a parent are supposed to sit back idly and be like, yeah, bravo. Great job, kids. And uh, in the meantime, you're basically Basically, this is the equivalent of the Hitler Youth. Is basically you, you, you now when you send your children to school, just let it be known that you are letting your children uh, join into the Hitler Youth so that they can be indoctrinated by the likes of people like Louis freaking Farrakhan. Uh, this is absolute, absolute. I don't even. I. I uh, 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 <laughs> I feel like having an Alex Jones. Uh, I'm gonna rip my shirt off here. Oh, let's look at the enough demands. Let's just look. These are their demands. Ready? Oh, These are their demands, okay? We demand, demand. that Congress and fuck they're using 18. your children. Where the fuck do you get off children. on having demands, you little pud? Right. We demand <laughs> that Congress fucking, enact. You don't even fucking shave. 
We do well. Some of them do. We demand that Congress enact an immediate so resolution the, the, declaring the, gun violence a public health crisis. That's a fucking lie, and dedicating federal funding to research solutions and implement violence intervention programs. We demand Congress recognize all forms of gun violence, including violence committed by police. Uh, violence committed by police, but meanwhile, disarm the fucking citizens. Yeah, good fucking job. The priority policies we support. Banning assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. What the fuck do you mean by an assault weapon? You don't even fucking know. Uh, expanding background checks to all gun sales. I don't know what that means. We already have background checks to all gun sales. I think unless you're, you know, like, if I sell my gun to a friend, you probably want to close that. You, you want that to be a background check. Passing gun violence restraining orders. Hold, oh, oh, those gun violence restraining order laws? Those are basically somebody charges you with something and they take your gun before it's been proven that your gun should be taken from you. So they're, you know, throw out that whole due process shit. Uh, stop yeah. militarizing law yeah, enforcement. Fuck the Fifth Act. Amendment. Well, I kind of agree with that one. <laughs> Fuck the Fifth Amendment. We don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I I agree with them on the militarization thing, but but meanwhile, you 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 want to stop the militarization of law enforcement. You're acknowledging that law enforcement is a problem, and you want to disarm people. There's a fucking cognitive dissonance problem there, idiots. <laughs> and when I say idiots, I'm not talking to the kids. I give the kids more more patience. I mean, they get a little bit 18, of leeway because they're eating Tide like. Pods. I I don't. I, I don't think most of them are Todd Pod eaters. There's a there's a few, but I don't think most of them are. And then the priority policies we oppose: conceal carry, reciprocity, reciprocity, and and any legislation that would aim to fortify our schools with more guns. Well, I agree with you there too. I don't like the idea of teachers having guns and putting armed guards in schools. It's it's. But again, it's 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 this list. It's demands, demand, demand, demand. That's that's. That's that's not how this works. You're you're not the only people in this land. I don't think that you kind of. I mean, th they're not being taught the democratic process. I'll use that term. They're not being taught the democratic process. They're being taught the thug process. We demand, we get. That's not how it works, dude. When you when you live in an, an ostensible republic. That has an ostensible rule of law. It's all BS, but just to pretend it's real. That's not how any of this is supposed to work. It's a conversation, and then there are certain lines that no, you just don't cross. Even no matter what your feels are, no matter how smart you think you are at the age of eighteen, there are just certain lines you don't cross. Well, and you know, here, here, here's something else too, right? This this whole list of demands it ends with this line. Gun violence is a complex issue and one that will be hard to eradicate completely. Well, yeah, well, good job, Junior. What do you do now once you've eradicated gun violence? It's not going to be like all of a sudden, you know, the last gun, the last gun goes into the kiln and gets melted down. And all of a sudden, everybody gets a unicorn and rainbows and lollipops are falling from the sky. Like, what the fuck do you think is going to happen after that? Yeah, like, do you think all London. of a sudden all violence is going to be gone? You're not going to get fucking stabbed in the neck next? I mean, go is that London. what they think? Go to London in the 1300s, you know, before people had guns. See what it was like there. Pretty violent. Go now. Go now. When they, oh, when, yeah, when, go when now. They're stabbing guns. everybody. It was, it was just, now, apparently. Stabbing, it was like 33 friggin' people got stabbed. I mean, what the hell is the difference if you get stabbed or get shot? What's the difference? Either way, you're probably going to be freaking dead. This is it's, this is nonsensical. Yeah, I don't. We 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 extended this a little bit more than I thought we would. <laughs> but okay, so I I I don't know. I I think we'll end it here, and and I will end it with this. I will, and and then if you have something to say afterwards, go ahead. I will end it with this. I am. I'm upset. I'm ab absolutely upset today, and I'm emotionally connected to this because this is happening in the schools right in the area that I live, and I have a daughter that goes to one of these schools that uh, took part in this garbage. 
So, yeah, I am, I'm emotionally invested in this, and I'm personally outraged. But when I, when I look past the outrage in the scheme of things, I kind of believe that tyranny is going to win short term. The, the, the flow towards uh, wanting more control and people wanting the government to take more control of their lives because of their uncertainty and fear, it's pretty strong. And I think it's really hard to, to cut against. But as this has happened, or as this is happening, there's, there's many new technologies that are, that are rapidly developing that, uh, no, matter, no matter what gun laws they pass, for instance, so the folks that don't give a crap about your laws, yeah, they're going to keep printing guns. They're going to be, and, and, you know, somebody said, oh, well, they got pretty printed guns, but they're not really that effective. Oh, you, you, you know, two years ago, maybe that was true. Uh, but 3D printed guns are much, much more effective now than they ever were. Uh, so, so there's you, you got cryptocurrencies coming online. You have, you have mesh networks that are coming online. The the balance of power is tilting towards individuals and free associations in pretty dramatic ways. Whatever gains these fools and idiots have right now, that they're going to use the 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 mechanism of the course of enterprise to try to inflict on the rest of us, they're going to be short-lived gains because the technology is quickly emerging, technologies that they're not going to be able to contain, that is going to allow more and more people to simply choose to ignore them and walk away. Anything for you, Niz, before we shut this down? I'm glad I live in Texas. <laughs> That's okay. all I can say. I'm glad right. I live in Texas. I drove today. We, we were out driving around uh, for work and uh, drove past several schools. And you want to know how many kids were outside protesting? I don't know. None. Not one. Wow. Well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, but, but on the flip side of that, not to bring you down, but if they had something where kids were going out to protest somebody burning a flag, Oh yeah, there'd be lots of them. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Lots of blue line stickers in that school parking lot. Let me tell you. Yeah. So there's there's uh, yeah. Every, every each side has their own poison pills that are difficult to swallow. <laughs> right. So uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what the show is going to be tomorrow night. I don't even know if I'm going to have a show tomorrow night. Uh, uh, not sure that Lou will be able to make it. And I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow night. But I do know one thing. Headlines you may have missed will be on tomorrow on my Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And you're looking for the guy with the AR-15. And just remember that the AR-15 is long gone, lost, lost to the Great Lakes in a boating accident. And so that picture is just a sweet reminder of what once was between me and, and by the way, the name of that gun is Disorder. Disorder's no longer with us, but he was a good guy. He did good by <laughs> me. And with that note, I'll say thank you, everyone who joined us, especially for the folks that uh, commented, even the worst human being on the face of the planet, which is, of course, Larry Cousins. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a great rest of the day. And remember, I mean, if we're going to have days like this, we who love liberty, we who love uh, you know, we, we side with individuals and free associations over course of enterprises. We're going to have days like this. It's going to be tough. But the odds are in our favor. May the odds be ever in your favor. They, they actually are. Midterm especially, the odds are in our favor. Good night, everybody. <laughs>